This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Boundaries aren't just a trend or a buzzword. They're important for a healthy life. Visit betterhelp.com super and see what setting boundaries means for your life. Hey, brother! Hey, did you guys see the uh, Oscars this weekend? Because I heard they totally slapped. <laughs> But no, yeah, I didn't actually watch them. Although what I can tell from my Twitter feed is that uh, as a general rule of thumb, maybe uh, one, don't make fun of people's ailments and two, uh, don't slap people. Uh, be nice, be super even. But I only bring it up at all because today we're gonna talk about the only category that matters anyway, which is best animated feature and its obvious winner, Encanto. Seriously, a big congrats to Encanto. I'm not sure there's been a more obvious winner of any category ever. Well, except maybe into the Spider-Verse. If that didn't win, if that didn't win Best Animated, then I oof, was gonna lose faith in everything. But anyway, to celebrate Encanto's big win, today we thought we'd dive once more again into the fantastical world of the family Madrigal and today discover the truth about everybody's powers. Like, why did each family member end up with the particular power that they got? And why are some so much more useful than the others? Well, today we find out. Guys, before we dive on into today's video, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, BetterHelp. Because relationships take work, whether it's your partner, your best friend, your family, they all need attention and care. But the one we most often forget about is the relationship we have with ourselves, which ironically is the most important one. And low key the theme of today's video. Therapy is an investment that will help you better understand yourself and therefore better help the rest of your relationships. And guys, I'll speak from personal experience with therapy. It is one of the things in life that I feel like does help me be the best partner, parent, and well, uploader I can be. Uploader is the term Ben and I came up with to try and replace like influencer or creator, because I don't know, I don't really like those words, it just feels better, that's not the point. BetterHelp offers video, phone, and live chat sessions with or without a camera with your therapist. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can be matched the therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have tried BetterHelp Online Therapy. Plus, you can head over to betterhelp.com slash super to get 10% off your first month. Again, that's betterhelp.com slash super for 10% off your first month. Link is in the description down below. All right, let's talk powers and why each member of the family Madrigal ended up with the particular power that they got. Was it just an extension of their personality? Was it meant to fill a particular role inside the town? Or was it something else together. Spoilers, it's kind of all three. Well, let's start with Antonio, whose door ceremony really kicks off the entire movie. His ultimate power is the ability to speak to animals, which really is not a shock to anybody watching the movie because just moments before the door ceremony started, Mirabelle gives him this gift, a stuffed jaguar, and refers to him as, I know you're an animal guy. But as such, it immediately seems like whatever your power ends up being is just sort of an extension of your own personality and interests. In fact, we even see this remain true with a few other members of the family as well. For example, during the family Madrigal, we see Luisa using Casita to turn one of the hallways into an impromptu treadmill, which may I point out she is running on whilst also curling dumbbells like, geez, Luisa. But I point this out because I think it shows us the audience that Luisa is genuinely interested in working out and being physically fit. Because lest I remind you, Luisa is magically gifted with super strength. Like, do you think she also needs to work out? Because I kind of doubt it. She's doing it because she enjoys it. And then of course, on some level, I think she feels the unbearable pressure to succeed no matter what, but more on that later. We also see from Isabella in one of my favorite moments of the whole movie that even after her powers are gone, she just loves to grow things. Similarly with her mom, Julieta. After Casita collapses, her first instinct is to run to Mirabel. And then even though her powers are gone without missing a beat, she immediately runs over and fishes out what I have to assume is a bottle of medicine. With or without the ability to magically heal by cooking, she still seeks to heal. So to some extent, yes, I think the powers do reflect the character's own personalities, but not all of them work out so perfectly. Like, I mean, take Dolores, for example. Does she just love listening to people or eavesdropping? I mean, I guess she does sort of gossip a little bit throughout the movie, so maybe that works. Does Peppa love the weather? Because honestly, if you ask me at that point in her life, I bet she hates it. I mean, seriously, does anyone get the shorter end of the stick than Peppa? I mean, she might even have it worse than Mirabelle. Okay, but so then maybe the powers are assigned to the characters based on the particular needs of the town at the time. After all, Abuela says very early on, we swear to always help those around us and earn the miracle that somehow found us. We also see Abuela instructing 
tempting Mirabelle and Antonio to use their gifts, whatever they end up being, they don't even know yet, to help strengthen the community. And again, for some characters, it's really obvious how that gift goes on to help the community. Like again, Louisa, the ability to just move an entire church, basically move anything, reroute a river, build a bridge. Yeah, obviously useful. Not gonna argue with that. Julieta's cooking, able to just heal broken bones and ailments of any kind. Yeah really impressive. I mean, seriously, what a total utopia. No one's ever sick here for longer than it takes to eat an arepa con queso. Even Antonio's ability to talk to animals seems really useful. I mean, the very least he could talk to the donkey, just trying to whip those boys into shape so Luisa doesn't have to keep chasing them down. But then you have other characters like Isabella. I'm like, sure, on the day we meet the family Madrigal, they're decorating the entire town to celebrate the door ceremony for Antonio. So yeah, she has a lot to do making flowers everywhere. But that's just that day. Like, what is she doing to help the town on the daily? Just like helping it look nice? I mean, I guess I guess that's good. Or like Camillo, like they show a couple of examples of him being helpful, like being able to look exactly like a baby's mother so she could take a break or turning into a taller person to be taller. Or Dolores, she can, uh, I don't know, I guess hear cries for help, help direct the arepa con quesos. It's really hard for hers to be a lot more active. Like when they're all marching into the town, like what's she going to go do just like, sit and listen. Actually though, I think Dolores and Camillo's gifts have a very powerful influence over the town in a very intangible way. Like I think just their mere existence basically halts any and every kind of crime and basically encourages everyone to always be kind to each other. Because I mean, think about it. Anything you ever do down to your eye twitching can be heard by Dolores. And anyone you're ever talking to could be Camilla. Not that I think either of them would ever actually be, you know, that invasive in that way, but they could be. Actually, you know what? I think Antonio falls into this exact category too. In fact, we see him do this exact thing with the rats. The rats told me everything. Which like, not for nothing, but Antonio totally plays dumb about this moment later on. Bruno. It's Bruno. Why are you acting like you don't know who Bruno is, Antonio? They did the whole future scene ceremony thing in your room. I'm watching you. Actually, while we're at it, let's just rope in that entire family, Peppa too. Because if her mood affects the weather, then it's the entire town's best interest to always keep her happy, because otherwise, hurricane. Actually, it's kind of weird that that entire side of the family has like a very passive effect on the town, where Julieta's side of the family is more like a really active side of the town. That somehow does not feel accidental. In any case though, while personal interest and town usefulness are great, I think each of the characters' powers actually stems from something a little bit deeper. And as with so many things in this movie, stem from the pressure and stress brought from Abuela to be a perfect family. In fact, when you look at it, each character's power ends up being like a manifestation of whatever coping mechanism they use the most to deal with that stress. Coping mechanisms, in case you don't know, are strategies people often use in the face of stress and or trauma to help manage painful or difficult emotion. Coping mechanisms can help people adjust to stressful events while helping them maintain their emotional well-being. And typically in real life, these are incredibly helpful thing and take on like bazillions of forms, whether it's just like counting, breathing, going on walks, exercising, reading, all sorts of things. But the characters in the movies lean on these and therefore their powers really hard to the point where they never end up actually dealing with whatever the trauma is and it's to their detriment. Let's start with the triplets, Julieta, Bruno, and Peppa. These three's powers have less to do with coping with the pressure to be perfect and more to do with coping about the fear of the unknown. Which makes sense because as infants, their father was murdered during an attack on their village and and now their single mom is having to raise all three of them while also founding and running an entire town. Even as small children, I'm sure their world felt very out of control. And as such, each of their powers reflects a certain desire to have some control. Hulanta's power is based in cooking, which is also a really common coping mechanism. Recipes tend to involve lists and exact measurements and predictable results, which you can recreate endlessly, which gives you a nice feeling of control. You know exactly what's going to happen when you're cooking. Bruno can literally see the future, something you'd think would offer him a sense of peace. You no longer have to wonder about what's going to happen. You literally get to know ahead of time. Unfortunately, he still doesn't know how people are going to react when he tells them the future and they don't always like it. He told me my fish would die the next day. Yeah. Peppa's is a little bit different though. Rather than with a concern of controlling her surroundings, hers is more a desire to control her emotions. Something she must have been told to do a lot as a kid, like 
put on a brave face. In fact, it's basically how people are still treating her as an adult. Like they all know how her power works, but whenever they see a storm cloud on, it's never like anyone saying, oh my God, Peppa, how are you feeling? What can I do to help? Would you like an arepa con queso? Instead, she's met with a lot of Peppa, turn off your cloud, or translation, Peppa, turn off your feelings. Peppa, you have a cloud. I know, mama, but now I can't find Antonio. Interestingly though, I think Peppa's actually capable of a lot more than we realize. By the end of the movie, when she feels a lot freer to express herself and has a much more healthy relationship with her emotions, we see that she can actually control the weather rather than it simply being controlled by however she's feeling. Throughout the entire movie, rain or precipitation or storms have been a reflection of a bad or upset mood, but at the end, she's able to happily create a hailstorm to help Louisa relax. Speaking of Louisa though, let's move on to the grandchildren. Isabella, as ever, is the perfect golden child, the eldest grandchild, and the first one to really feel that like full weight of expectation from Abuela. And that expectation is perfection. And as such, her coping mechanism is perfectionism. If I do everything exactly right, that'll make everyone happy. And that'll make me happy. Right? It sounds good, but I'm sure if you've ever really known like a true perfectionist, you might know that this is really kind of a hard one to deal with and not always such a good one. Because the trouble is what the perfectionist considers right or perfect typically becomes further and further out of reach. And that's because of the perfectionism, which tends to make them more anxious about being more perfect, which makes them more anxious and on and on and on. I've been stuck being perfect my whole entire life. And you can see it ultimately holds Issa back. She is gifted with the ability to grow basically anything at will, but she's so concerned with being perfect that she limits herself to growing nothing but flowers for the first 16 years she has this power. But similar to Peppa, once she breaks down those walls, she is way more capable. Similar to Isabella, Dolores' power seems to be sourced from a fear of failure. But rather than actively trying to be perfect all the time, she has a more passive, if I don't try, then I can't fail sort of approach. As such, she almost never speaks up for herself. And when she does, it's always very quiet. Instead, she just always listens to everyone. And the big one for her is her line in We Don't Talk About Bruno, where she says, he told me the man of my dreams would be just out of reach, betrothed to another. Sounds a lot better when she says it, but you know, copyright YouTube. Ugh. We ultimately learn that the man just out of reach is Mariano because he's engaged to Isabella who doesn't even want to marry him. But she also finds resolution at the end and finally does speak up and sees the moment. Her younger brother Camillo shares a similar fear that who he is personally won't be good enough or won't be accepted. So his coping mechanism and power is mirroring. Basically how this works is you just mirror and match the enthusiasm or mood of whoever you're talking to all the time, but always hide what you're personally feeling underneath. And it's kind of hard to say whether or not Camillo actually gets much resolution by the end, but during that final sequence, when everyone's sort of rediscovering his powers, we notably don't see him shapeshift again. So maybe that's supposed to represent him being more at peace with himself or I like to think so. Antonio actually has kind of a fun one because I dare say that the coping mechanism that he represents is a security animal or like a comfort item, something like a teddy bear or blanket. And to be fair, it's not that his closeness with animals explicitly serves as a reference to this concept because after all, plenty of adults love animals too and they don't typically still carry around like a security blanket or something, but emotional support animals are still a thing. But the real tell comes right here before he formally receives his gift. It's right here when he receives a gift. Uh, is it did there? Two gifts, huh? Well done, Jay. No, but before his actual door ceremony, he is scared, nervous, and anxious. And what helps him out is Mirabelle, and specifically the act of giving him this gift, a stuffed jaguar. And last, but certainly not least, we have Louisa and her super strength, who I dare say probably needs the least amount of explanation. I mean, she just flat out says, I'm pretty sure I'm worthless if I can't be of service. Again, it's better when she says it, but copyright. Much like her sister Isabella, she feels that pressure to be perfect, but her strategy is to just never stop serving others. Ever. Because if I'm always helping people, then that will make everybody happy, and that will make me happy. <laughs> right? Well, it turns out wrong, because by never focusing on herself ever, she starts feeling the crushing weight of expectation. And ultimately, she becomes less effective overall. But much like the rest of the characters, she does eventually learn to embrace herself and is able to put herself first and actually relax a little by the end of the movie. 
Whew, man, that was a lot. Honestly, I feel like I learned a lot about how even maybe I personally deal with stress while writing this video. Hopefully uh, you did too. Also, just one more time, in case it wasn't clear, coping mechanisms are typically a very good thing and very helpful in day-to-day -day life. I don't know if that stopped being clear, maybe by the end there, which now I realize I'm sort of stressing on like, oh no, did I send the wrong message? What am I gonna do? Do I need to reshoot the video? Should I rewrite it? Ah! Ben, my question for you and everyone else is, which character did you find yourself relating to the most in Encanto? Let us know in the towel section down below. But guys, as always, thank you so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to hit the like button if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Disney action from us. If you want to see what was Abuela's gift in Encanto, you can check out this video right here. But otherwise, until next time, Ben, I will see you in the lift.